So welcome to the service. We're going to now look at God's Word here in Esther chapter 9, 18 to 32. We welcome you to look at these things, whether you're looking on YouTube or wherever on the church website. And we pray that God will indeed bless and His Holy Spirit will guide you as we think about this wonderful celebration. I suppose you have thought about celebrations and there are many celebrations have taken place in our, here in Ireland. We like celebrations, but uh, unfortunately sometimes they can go over the top. Uh, so, a wonderful celebration. Why celebrate? Why bother? Well, of course, on the, the 13th day there was fasting. They would normally fast on the 13th day. Why? Because that's the day that the Jews, that Haman had planned for the Jews to be annihilated. And he conned King Ahasuerus, we saw, into writing a decree that that would happen. Ahasuerus didn't know the peoples that was going to be um, a, a, annihilated, but uh, later he found out it was the Jews. And then, feasting. They were feasting on the 14th and the 15th day. Uh, it can vary that, but normally the feasting was on the 14th and 15th day. Uh, it varied in different places, but nevertheless, don't worry. And of course, it was interesting, on the 12th month, Adar. So that was one month before Passover. Twelve months in the year, in the Jewish year, and uh, the the first. Now, when I'm telling you this, I'm following the religious calendar. The other calendar, the year started in uh, uh, September, October, uh, for the uh, for the agricultural year, they might call it, or the uh, social, their own their year. But uh, the religious are to talk about these feasts. Uh, uh, they started with uh, in uh, March, April, uh, around our Easter time. Wonderful celebration. But the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day as well as on the 14th. And on the 15th of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting. And gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the village who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and, and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. So, it was amazing. Uh, we might do that at some time of the year. Uh, and uh, they did make this a very special time. And uh, the, the uh, really. It meant a lot of it. Of course, it was because they were saved. They were uh, saved from annihilation. And they, they always wanted to remember this. They wanted to pass it on down to their children. And the great thing is that we can pass God's word on down. And we are to tell our children and the children's children. They all have to hear the good news of the gospel, the message, and the word of God. And it's here in God's word for us. Um, Maybe not some, one of the easiest places to, to think about, but it is a wonderful celebration. But you know, first of all, it's a wonderful deliverance. Now, in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them. The opposite occurred. In that the Jews themselves overpowered those who headed them. And so we see that God overruled here and he directed and the Jews were saved. And that has happened down through the ages. Uh, and we've seen it on Thursday night in Laos where, where uh, people were protected from the enemies. Those who wanted to kill them and to destroy them and to get rid of God's word. But there were those who were bringing in the Bible and carrying it in on their back. 
to bring to the people. Wonderful dictation. Mordecai recorded these events. Mordecai became a very prominent man. God used him very much and brought him to a very high position, the place of what uh, we would call Tishuk. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, he was next to the king then. Mordecai recorded these events and letters and sent to 127 Persian provinces. That, of course, was what? The Persian Empire. It stretched from India to Kush. It was a world empire, superpower, and uh, he, uh, you know, King Hashiwaras was quite a king over that. Uh, amongst all, maybe the terrible things, he, he, he was very nice. And God did direct him. And uh, though he got rid of his uh, first queen, uh, uh, he, he then, uh, in God's providence, a chose Esther then as, as queen. And she's there as, as a time and a special time for God to use. As well as uh, Mordecai. Wonderful then direction. The Jews should celebrate yearly the 14th and the 15th days of the month of Adar as the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them. The wonderful that we, the sorrow, the days of sorrow can be gone. And, and uh, if, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, there can be sadness and you maybe want to know him, but when you do come to know him, you can turn into joy. You can joy come into your life and peace and happiness. So, for these, because they were, it was going to be ter it was terrible, uh, yet it was turned from sorrow to joy for them. And from mourning to a holiday, <coughs> that they should make them days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts for the poor. So it was amazing things they did, you see. They were directed to do these things and they... they uh, celebrated it in an amazing way uh, and they they thought about the poor at this time as well and that was uh, quite interesting wonderful direction it was as I said already one month before Passover it was the twelfth month uh, getting near the end of the year that might confuse some people a bit why no rest on the thirteenth of Adar, the twelfth month. Well, the particular reason was that that was the day. There was no rest. It was fasting. That was the day when it was planned to annihilate the Jews. All the enemies of the Jews were going to come down. But they, the king had made another decree, King Hashuerus had made another decree by the direction of uh, Queen Esther to, uh, that they could protect themselves, the Jews could protect themselves. Uh, otherwise, if they hadn't made that decree, the, the enemies of the Jews could overpower them. But they weren't able to overpower them. So, there was no rest that day. And, they had, and from now on then, they make it a day of fasting. And so there was great protection of because Haman, remember wicked Haman, the son of Hamadatta, the Agite, he was of the tribe of the Agites, and the, the enemy of all the Jews had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them, and had cast pur, that is the lot, to consume them and destroy them. So he cast lots. And in, the, in God's direction, it landed on uh, the 13th. Maybe we don't like the 13th, but uh, <laughs> that, uh, uh, <coughs> it doesn't matter too much, does it? Um, the main thing is that God overruled, you see, uh, in that particular number. Wonderful decision. 
So they call these days Purim, after the name Pur. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning this matter and what had happened to them. So, you may be learning a little bit more where it came from. Of course, it came as Persian. Why Purim? Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them and had cast Pur, that is the lot, to consume them and destroy them. It's an interesting way it's put there uh, and how they got the, there's where they got their name, Purim, from Pur. Pur is a Persian word that signifies a lot. Haman cast lots to determine the day to destroy the Jews. God decided it would be their triumph. And I think some men like uh, Matthew Henry is a very good at look at some of these things. I think his, that quote maybe came, idea came from him. Wonderful desire. The Jews established and imposed it upon themselves. It's interesting, isn't it? They established it and they imposed it. So it's, it wasn't something, uh, it's not something that was uh, planned totally by God, but Mordecai and Esther decided it should be remembered because it was so special. We have our special days to remember, but you know the greatest day to remember is the first day of the week. Rita always reminds me about the first day of the week. Some of uh, the calendars want to make it the last day of the week. Uh, but uh, it's the first day of the week. And the one thing necessary, one thing's important about the first day of the week, what is that? It's the day to remember Jesus rose from the dead. And what's the second one? The second one is the sending of the Holy Spirit. Very important. Uh, if anybody else tells you why you meet on a Sunday or shouldn't meet on a Sunday, that's two very important, isn't it, reasons to meet on a Sunday and not a Saturday. Why the Feast of Purim? The Feast of Purim was to remind the Jews of God's deliverance. And there are many ways we can remember God's deliverance too. God delivered the Jews, the Hebrews, out of Egypt. That was a great deliverance. That was a great salvation. And we can remember God delivering us the day that we trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ to believe he died to save us and rose again to give us new life and hope and that God accepted all that he'd done for us. And so this feast of Purim was to remind the Jews of God's deliverance, to thank God for that. That's what it would be supposed to be. A holy feast? No. It wasn't a holy feast. But it was a day to remember those things. Right. What were the three annual feasts a Jewish male should attend or celebrate? There were three special feasts. What was that? Passover was one, wasn't it? The Passover lamb, remembering the Passover lamb that was sprinkled on the doors in Egypt. Two. And that the destroying angel passed over. That's why it was Passover and didn't uh, do anything and uh, go into that house. Then there's Pentecost, mm -hmm. the feast of first fruits. And uh, Pente is 50, 50 days after. What? The resurrection. And the, the Holy Spirit coming down. Passover, Pentecost. They called it the Feast of First Week. Then there's the Tabernacles, which uh, is really harvest, reminding of the harvest and the end of the age. Uh, and the Feast of Tabernacles would be celebrated um, in uh, about the uh, September time. September, October. 
So, there were the feasts. Wonderful devotion. There was great devotion. There was great concern. That these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation. This was written down by uh, and uh, dictated by uh, Mordecai. And it had to be kept and kept throughout every generation. The Jews were very keen about these things, to remember these things. Uh, and the boy would ask at the Passover time, what, was this, what did this mean? To every family, in every province, and every city, over the 127 provinces, that was the then known world, the empire, the world of, of the, the Persian world, Persian uh, Empire, all those provinces and every city, that these days of Purim should not fail, but be observed among the Jews, and that the memory of them should, be, should not perish from among their descendants. And they do keep it even up to this day. They really, uh, but they, they go over the top with it, of course. Like most mm -hmm. things happen, don't they? Yes. But it is this wonderful devotion, great devotion they had. It was great thought. As the days in which the Jews had rest from their enemies, and as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to holiday, they were really, they would have been mourning. They were, they were in mourning before this. You know. That they should make them days of feasting and joy of sending presents to one another and to give. So they, they would really go into all these things and, and they would do them. They made a big issue about it. And a great concern, great devotion for all that. But the conclusion. The celebrations can degenerate. Celebrations are good, aren't they? It's good to celebrate things, but if they degenerate, if they lead us away from the Lord, eh? and if they get between, and so what happens for the Jews? They got caught up in, in, in different things. Uh, and they made a big issue about it. And they, I, I seen some of the pictures. They would have huge costumes, uh, and they would walk about and uh, make a, a mighty show of all that and party. And you know, it reminds us that some of our local festivals have ceased. Why? Because of various things happening. The uh, bachelor festival, they had to finish with that. Because it was, what? Like the Feast of Purim, it had become, well it was worldly anyway. But the Feast of Purim has become worldly. And what's happened to it? Well, gluttony. They were overeating, weren't they? And there would be a huge emphasis, like our Christmas, wouldn't there? We'd have a huge emphasis on the food. We don't know maybe we do it that much, do we? But, uh, and then drunkenness. We would be drunk. You know, I was uh, uh, read that they would drink so much that uh, they didn't know the difference between him and, and, and cursing him and Mordecai, and they'd be so drunk that they couldn't see the difference, you know, so often. Took all over, you see. And then riot, of course, rioting. That all happens, and in our world today, we're no better, are we? No. But rioting and all the different things that happen at different times. And the only answer is what? The Lord, is The only answer is to turn to Him. It was very sad when a, a special celebration to remind them of God's deliverance is turned into something like this. And you know, we have to remember too to celebrate God's great deliverances for us, what God has done for us. Not allow it to gently generate. Mm -hmm. And that was what has happened, isn't it? 
in, in Christian in our church, in our country, in religious things, you know. Uh, two men were discussing one time on the train. One was a bishop and the other was a pastor. And they come to the conclusion that religion had uh, a... What? The religion had let down the people. Religion had uh, betrayed or had, um, you know, mm -hmm. has, has uh, not been the answer. Mm -hmm. So, and during the, this feast, at least, of the Jews, this feast of Purim, the Jews would read through the book of Esther. The scroll of Esther would be used at that time. So, are there any lessons for us? Maybe we have touched across some of them. Are there anything for us here in this? And uh, I was thinking of a man called Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo. He became the Bishop of Hippo. His mother prayed for him. He was a man in his unconverted days had uh, women, you know, and he was very much involved in all that. But of course she prayed for him, and uh, she prayed for him, and it was, something happened. Do you know what happened? He was out in his garden, and he was thinking. Next door there was a children playing. And in the, uh, the particular game they played, there was this particular reading. I think it was uh, in Latin, was Tele Legge or something like that. And they would take up and read. Take up and read. And Augustine or Augustine thought it was God was saying, go in, take, go in and take up and read your Bible. And you know, he hadn't been a reader of the Bible. But what did he do? He went in. And the Bible fell open. It wasn't random. It was the providence of God, wasn't it? Romans 13. Let us walk properly as in the day. Not in revelry and in drunkenness. Not in lewdness and lust. Not in strife and envy. But... What? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So what did he realize? He needed to leave that old life, to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, to repent of going his way, this worldly way, and to follow God's way. But you know he found it was a better life. It was a greater, great life. To leave his old wild life of drinking and, and lewdness and, uh, and the women and, and to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, we're not to make, you see, provision for the flesh. To fulfill his life. And so there he was learning uh, a great lesson, wasn't it? And whether it's a lesson for the Jews or Gentiles or whoever they are, it's a lesson to follow the Lord. It's Jesus is the answer, isn't it? The hope for us. That's what uh, this man had, had a bag, and in the bag, here's a story for the young ones. In the bag was a was something, uh, and the preacher says. Will you guess what I have in this bag? And uh, nobody was offering to guess. It was a big bag. Uh, and they uh, looked around the shape of it and there was like an ear or uh, something sticking there, you know. And, uh, and one boy put up his hand and he says, Well, he really said, I think Jesus is the answer. But if I'm not mistaken, there's a, a teddy bear in that bag. And of course, that was, that was it, you see. He, he, 
He was one that uh, he was trying to get their attention, of course, but the wee boy was, was jumping to the conclusion that um, it has something to do with Jesus, this, you know. <laughs> that must be the real answer. And so Jesus is the answer, isn't he? He is the hope. He's our king. He's our saviour to trust in and follow. And it is our prayer that whatever you're listening, that you will put your faith and trust in Christ alone for salvation. Do you believe he is your sovereign and your saviour and deliverer? So, thank you for listening uh, to this thought on the wonderful celebration. Be careful with your celebrations and uh, we do invite you to visit the website.